Romans chapter 9, verse 1 says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing with me, or bearing witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. And this is the Apostle Paul talking here, and he's expressing a great and a deep personal concern for his country for his physical people, for his nation, a nation that was wicked, a nation that was in trouble with God, and, in, and a nation that was heading for destruction. And we talked about it uh, Wednesday. Go back and listen to my message on Wednesday. It's Romans 9 where we see that Israel, they were the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction. So they were somebody that God raised up basically to show his power, to destroy. But the apostle Paul loved those people. They were his people. And he's like, you know what? I've got a sorrow in my heart. And it was his desire that they would be saved. And we see the Apostle Paul constantly, you know, while his ministry was mainly to the Gentiles, we see him going to the Jews quite a bit too. And you know what? He always got beat up by him, persecuted by him. But he just loved these people. And he just wanted to see some get saved. And that was his attitude. And I want to kind of follow, I, I want to have the same attitude that the Apostle Paul has when it comes to my country. When it comes to the country of my physical birth, the country that I am a citizen of. And I want to talk this morning about proper love of country. Because when it comes to loving your country, it's something you can't take too far. And I often, you know, in the old IFB world, you know, I often cringe at, you know, how overboard they go with some of the American stuff. You know, right now it's 4th of July. And let me tell you, churches are red, white, and blue all over the place. I mean, American flags everywhere. And I'm not going to get up here and just condemn all that. You know, you got your new eye of beers. Like, what are you doing with the Babylonian flags? You know, not everybody's watched Babylon USA, okay? That doesn't mean that for everybody. So, you know, just take it easy. You know, they're, it's a holiday. They're excited about their country, you know. And, you know, we've got some stuff to be excited about in our country, you know. Our, you know some of our history is pretty cool. And I'm sorry, but you know what? A bunch of rebels going against the tyrant King George and, you know, starting a revolution uh, just makes me feel pretty good. It just, it really does. And I might, maybe I'm brainwashed, but I kind of like that. And I'm all for fireworks and celebrating freedom. I'm not going to lie. I got a little excited when I saw California's response to the no fireworks law. And there's a plane flying over the city and fireworks going off everywhere. It gave me a pretty good feeling when I saw that. I did a post. I shared a post of it. I had to take it down. I didn't realize there was a there was an inappropriate emoji on there. If you're wondering what happened there, but at the same time, I, I felt pretty good <laughs> when when I saw that because you know we do we love freedom in this country, and some of us you know maybe we have been duped about the freedom that we have. But you know what? I'm thankful. I at least thought we had freedom because it makes me feel really good, and I want and I'm going to keep living in the delusion. And whenever tyrants come along like J.B. Pritzker and want to try to put a stop to those things, I feel like it is our right, it is our sacred duty to stand up against stuff like that. And I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it with great joy. And you know what? With zero guilt. Zero guilt. I'm thrilled that Pritzker's uh, executive orders got shot down, ruled unconstitutional. Folks, you know what that means? We never violated any laws when we continued having service here, we didn't violate any laws. We submitted to the higher powers. We actually followed Romans 13. And we've been vindicated legally. So I think that's a great thing. But, you know, again, you can, you can take the love of country a little too far. I, you know, I have the cringe moments you know, in the old IFB. But then in the new IFB, I have my cringe moments with them just like just, you know, hating the country. You know, and just pronouncing curses and wishing it all go away and everything's bad, everything's evil. You know, I'm, I'm, nobody's burnt the flag yet. And I tell you, once they do that, I'm turning in my new IFB card right there. I think you're taking it too far right there. You know, that just, that, that that's ridiculous. But it's just like, okay, I get it. On one, we got, on one side, they're taking it too far the other way, but that doesn't mean we take it too far the other direction. Okay. You know, in a Liberty Baptist church, we're true independents. You know, we always have the perfect balance and everything, right? I mean, I guess everybody thinks they have that, you know, but uh, at the same time, you know, I, I do want to be balanced because I don't want to act crazy and, you know, have America first before God, you know, and I, I don't want to do that. But at the same time, 
I'm not going to lie, I do love our country. And I don't think that's inappropriate. And I do. I, I often cringe at our crowd at some of the dumb stuff they say, some of the dumb stuff that's been preached. We're just anything that's associated with America is now bad. You know, freedom, religious freedom, property rights. When you're, when you're throwing everything out, really? We got some stuff going for us, all right? And you know what? We've got some pretty good history. Some. We got some bad stuff. We, we've got our stuff we need to be ashamed of. We'll talk about that a little bit. We do. We've got our stuff we should be ashamed of. And I'll talk about how to deal with that. But, you know, we're not just going to go reprobating all our founding fathers. Some of them were pretty bad. Some of them were pretty cool, though. I'm sorry. Patrick Henry's pretty cool. I, I, I can't help that. And I, 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 that's how I feel. And, you know, there's some I'm embarrassed about. And there, you know, and, and I can go into all the stories I heard growing up. We were talking about some before church, you know, the famous Heim Solomon story that everybody tells about how God blessed our nation because a Jew helped us out by funding the Revolutionary War. It's like, really? Okay, you know, that's interesting. That's why we got that Star of David on the back of our dollar bill. You know, you just some of the dumb stuff, the dumb stories have been circulating through churches forever. And, you know, it's, it, it's, that makes me cringe too. But again, let's not take it the other way. It let, there's a way to, uh, you know, be balanced in this thing. And, you know, because, and here's what we, any of us could do. If I wanted, I could get up here and with my King James Bible, I could find many verses to condemn our country with. Couldn't I? I could easily do that. You know why? Because our country has a lot of problems. Our country has, you know, had a lot of failures in the past. There's a lot of sin in this country. So I could get up and I could beat my chest about how wicked it is and how I'm just praying every day for just a meteor to come and just take us out and, you know, for China to just come nuke us or something like that. You know, I, I could talk like that and act like I'm real hardcore, but I don't think that's right. I don't think that's what, the way we ought to do it. And it said, you know, I can just get up, preach a whole sermon, Psalms 9, 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. And our nation has forgotten God. And then I could just, for the next hour, just rail on how wicked our country is. I could do that if I wanted. Okay, that's the new IFB way. The old IFB way, I would get up and I would start to do a ser uh, verse, Isaiah 33, 22, that says, for the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, he will save us. I don't know if y'all caught that there, but the Lord is our judge, the judicial system. We got three branches of government. The Lord is our lawgiver, the legislative branch of government, and the Lord is our king, the executive branch. Our nation was founded on biblical principles, and we they put together a form of government that lined up with the scriptures and with the word of God. Okay. And then I could talk about just how righteous our nation is. Now, I've heard people in American documentaries use that verse to show that that's how they got the three branches of government. I don't know that's true. I kind of think they just got lucky, personally. I, that's what I think. But at the same time, I, you know, there's a lot of laws that we have in our country or have had in our country that do line up with the Bible. Don't, you know, aren't there? I mean, like the property rights ones. You know, these are things that are based on biblical principles and I believe our country did try to base some of this stuff off the word of God. And I think that's great. But at the same time, too, I'm not just going to get up here and just, you know, wrap myself in an American flag and just don't you dare say anything against this nation. Or, you know, you know if you don't like this nation, you can get out of here and leave and go to communist China or something. Like that. I don't think we I don't th I think we can take it too far the other way, too. So what's a. You know, what's the attitude you should have as an individual? Because I do believe you ought to love your country, but you don't want to take it too far. I believe, and there is a way we can have a proper love for country. So turn over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 12. All right, so first off, why should we love our country? Okay, because I'm, I'm telling you today that you ought to love America. That's what I believe. You ought to love it. It says in 1 Thessalonians 3, 12, And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. Did you know that we are supposed to be a loving people? It should just be our default setting to just love people and to love things and be loving and to be increasing in love. And so I'm telling you, you ought to love this country because you're just supposed to be loving people. And as people of God, one of the most notable things about God is his love and loving wicked people, loving those who don't deserve it. 
I'm here today to tell you that because you are a child of God, that you should just be like God and just love your country, love this country because you are loving. Well, I don't see where it's any different, you know, than loving any other country. You know, I'm so loving. I love China better than I love America because it's just so wicked. And you know, to whom much is given, much is required. And America has been given much. China has been given nothing. And therefore, me just to prove that I'm still loving while I'm being rebuked is I'm going to just say I love China even more than I love the United States. You're a liar. Okay. Let me just mark it down. You're a liar. And I'll prove that to you in a little bit. But that's just kind of the attitude we have. Because, you know, even our hatred that we have, I get it. Ecclesiastes 3.8 says, a time to love and a time to hate. But did you all know that our hatred that we have, that we're supposed to have, should actually be motivated by love? Okay, you know why we hate pedophiles? Because we love children so much. We don't hate them just to hate them. We hate them because we love children so much. Because we love people so much, we're going to hate those who are trying to kill people and trying to hurt people. You know, because we love our country... We're going to hate those politicians that are doing everything they can to just destroy this country. Because we love babies, we're going to hate any politician that, or any judge that would be uh, promoting laws and pushing laws that allow people to murder a baby. Okay? So even our hatred, it's not motivated by hatred. It's motivated by love. It's fueled with love. If you don't have any hate, you don't have any love. And if you don't have any love, you don't have any real hate. And let me tell you something about a lot of these people who are always going around screaming about how they hate everything to try to impress people. You know what? I don't believe them because they don't have any love. There's no evidence of love anywhere in their life. So great. You got all this. Boy, you hate our country so much because you just love righteousness so much. But I'm sorry. I'm not seeing the love for righteousness. I'm not seeing love for any people anywhere in your life. So when you beat your chest and you act all hardcore about how much you hate, just mark it down. I don't believe you. I think you're a fraud. I think you're just trying to get attention. I think you're just talking about your hate because you like the shock value. I think you're just trying to get attention because you do. If you love anything, you love yourself. That's all there is to it. I don't fall for that kind of thing. If you're talking about hate way more than you're talking about love, I don't believe you. So our, our hatred that we have is one that's motivated by love. And the truth is, you can't act like you have a love for God while not having a love for others, especially your enemies. It says in Matthew 5, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven." For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Our love that we have love for we have for our enemies is what shows us that we are God's children. There are many things that we can look at that help us identify whose child someone is. For example, looks. When I was looking at Daniel Shelby's baby yesterday, you know, I was noticing you know, Daniel in the baby. I noticed the similarities there. We always do that when we meet children. Of people that we know, we look for those similarities, often in the looks, but you know what? Often in the behavior too. You know, have you as for example, too, you know, if you knew somebody growing up and then you meet their children and you see their children maybe act a certain way, it's like I I can tell that's your child. Why? Because of how they're acting. Okay, sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. And I I hear that a lot with Jason. I can tell he's your son, you know, because of how he acts. You know, not just how he looks. We get we get both, but also by how he acts too. People often bring that type of thing up. And the way people know we're the children of God is we love our enemies. Because that's what God did when he came to earth and he died for a sinful, undeserving earth. And so I'm telling you today, even though our country is, got a, is doing a lot against us, even though our country is doing a lot of bad things, because we are the children of God, we ought to love him anyway. We ought to love him because we're trying to make a difference. And Jesus didn't just love us by just feeling good about us. No, he died for us. He died on the cross for us. You know what? We ought to be willing to lay down our life for the brethren. We ought to be willing to give our lives to try to reach this nation, to try to make a difference, to try to do some good in this country. That ought to be our attitude. And you know what? We're going to want to do good if we actually love this country. You know, and I do. I scratch my head with some of these people that act like they hate our country so much, but then also act like hardcore soul winners. Because right, yeah. it's like, wait a minute. 
I'll tell you right now, what motivates me to go soul winning is love. I love people. Therefore, I want to see them get saved. And yet you are full of hate. All you do is talk about hate. You talk about how much you love this country, but then you talk about, well, you know, when you're being an idiot, running your mouth about you know, how bad this country is and talking like a communist, when you get called out for it, yeah, well, at least I'm a soul winner. Yeah, and, that, and that's, I'm, I'm getting sick of that too. Everybody justifying every bit of garbage in their life just because they're a soul winner. Well, you know what? Great. You go out soul winning, but you know what? Your testimony is so bad. You're doing more damage and you're doing good. I'll tell you that right now. You're a horrible testimony, and I'm sorry. I don't believe anybody that goes out there with a heart full of hate is accomplishing anything when they go soul winning. My Bible says, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. And you guys are going out there fueled by hate. I'm sorry. I, I'm not falling for that. I don't think that's legit. I don't think there's any love there. I think you're just... A great big walking mouth is what I think and I and I'm not impressed so we ought to love our country why because we are loving people so it's just it's just a natural thing for us you know you do you have to teach people how to hate stuff and you know if you hate this country you have to teach somebody taught you to do that that's all there is to it somebody taught you to hate it you didn't just come to that on your own you got, you got some bad teaching somewhere. So look at what it says again in Romans 9, uh, where we started out. We see that the Apostle Paul, he's talking about this you know, great heaviness, this continual sorrow in his heart. Okay, And the truth is, we ought to love our country because we are just compassionate and concerned. Okay? We're concerned. See, and that's where I think a lot of people are missing the boat who are on the wrong side of things when it comes to maybe loving the country too much and is everything in America is great and everything's wonderful. My question to these people, you know, the Fox News Baptists and stuff like that is, are you not concerned about what's going on right now? Are you not concerned you know, with the Republican Party? You know, they act like the Republican Party is God's party. And that they, these are God's men and the Republicans are just the only hope for America. And we're all going to be hearing that for the next couple months. Okay, you're all going to be getting rebuked if you don't go out and vote. Because if you don't vote, you know, the you know, Democrats are going to get in. And they're going to destroy this country. And, you know, we've got to just do our civil duty. And we've got to, uh, you know, vote Republican. And it's just like, hey, have you all noticed who's been, what party has been in power the last couple of years? Uh, it's a Republican president that we have right now during the biggest seize on um, liberties in our history. Uh, you don't think it was Trump that did it? Hey, I'm just saying he's the head of the executive branch of the government, and I haven't seen him stop it. Yeah, but he did get out there and he declared church is essential. Yeah, after he locked us down for two months. I don't remember Obama doing that. I don't remember that. I don't remember Obama coming out and issuing a stay-at-home order for the whole country. I don't remember Obama doing that. I remember. I do remember Trump doing that. And yes, we're going into election season, and now all of a sudden now, he's talking all big, like he's for us and opening things up, and it's just like, hey, I can't help but notice you're the one that's president, and I'm sorry, I think objectively, if a Democrat was in office while all this stuff was going on, I'm telling you, man, Christians and Baptists would be saying, is this the Antichrist? <laughs> That's what they'd be saying. They'd be talking about him like it was the Antichrist. We are seeing him make war with the saints. That's what they'd be saying. If, if Trump did exactly what he has done as a Democrat and but yet, at the same time, folks, I, I see it on Facebook and everything. These people are still praising him like crazy and just, I mean, posting these pictures of him at the Oval Office praying and like the Lord standing there with them. And it's just like, really? You know, and it's like, are, are you not concerned with the direction of the Republican Party? Are you not concerned, you know, with the state, this is the state of things in this country? And the apostle, because the apostle Paul, because he loved his country, he was greatly concerned about what he, it was, they were doing. And you know what he was doing? He was calling it out. He wasn't having these Jewish leaders come speak and honor them 
in his church, like we're seeing Baptists do, where they'll have Republicans come in, let them speak behind their pulpits while they heap all kinds of praise and honor on these guys. I'm sorry, that's out of line. Are you not concerned about what these people are doing? Because you see, because I actually love them, I'm concerned about it. And you know, I don't want to send Mike Pence, I don't want to send Donald Trump the wrong idea when I am very concerned about their souls. I don't want to send them the wrong idea by inviting them to come and give us the high honor of allowing them to speak, of them speaking in our church. And then us just heaping all, how am I going to convince them they need to get saved when we do that? How do you convince anybody that they need to get saved when you bring them into the church, everybody gives them a standing ovation, you put them behind the pulpit, and you let them speak, and you just faint over their every word? Why in the world are they going to think they need to get saved after that? I'm sorry, because I love this country, I am concerned about it, and you better believe I'm going to call out the wickedness that's going on in this country. But me calling out the wickedness is not me throwing out railing accusations. It's me expressing concern because I love this country. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying we just go say extreme things, okay? I'm sorry. Yesterday wasn't Babylon's birthday because Babylon wasn't started in 1776 on July 4th. All right? I get it. I do think we're Babylon now. But again... United States is something different, right? We've been infiltrated, you know, and I don't want to go into all that, but it's just like, you know, just stop saying dumb stuff. Hey, stop saying dumb stuff, all right? Just chill out, get some balance. You know, here, here's the problem in the new IFB, okay? And I won't say this right, and I wish this was, my, this was an original, but I'm sorry, there has not been enough Holy Ghost unction to fill the gas tank of an ant's moped to help it do a half a lap around a Cheerio. I'm sorry, that's just, they have no discernment. The people in this crowd, they have no discernment with anything. They just wanted to shoot down everything that moves. And they just want to declare everything, but they have no discernment when it comes to anything. And just some of the dumb stuff that people are preaching, some of the stuff, dumb stuff people are saying, it's like, what is wrong? And you know what part of the problem is? You know, some, I think it's just no Holy Spirit. Listen, the Holy Spirit he never leaves the believer and takes away your salvation. But let me tell you something. When you get involved in sin, when you get involved in wickedness, when you get lifted up with pride, you think the Holy Spirit's going to help you out in that situation? You think he's going to give you the discernment to preach the right things and to say the right things and to know how to act and to know how to respond in situations? Sorry, you're on your own, buddy, and your dirty, stinking flesh. Prepare for failure. And that's why we're seeing a lot of the dumb stuff that we're seeing going on in the new IFB world today because they've ran off the Holy Spirit. Because you know what? There's only room for one to be glorified, and that is God. Amen. And when we go getting lifted up with pride and pounding our chest and acting like we're all that in a bag of chips, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit's not going to be involved in that for one second. You say, Pastor Tommy, how dare you say that? How dare you act that way? We're going to kick you out of the new IB. You know why I say that? Because like the Apostle Paul, I have a heaviness in my heart. I have a continual sorrow. You know why? Because I love it. And I'm concerned. And just like I'm not going to ignore the sins of this nation, I'm going to call it out. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to call out the sins that go on with even people we associate with. I'm going to, I'll call out the dumb preaching. I'll call out bad stuff and the wickedness that's going on and saying that we're going to lose, we're going to lose the power if that kind of stuff gets involved. And, you know, and we got to watch out for that. And we're seeing people on the other side said on the, in the old IFB, they're not calling out enough of this junk. They're, and they need to be calling it out, and we do it because we love it. And so we're going to call out these problems. Just because we love doesn't mean we can't call out the problems. Look what it says in Ezra chapter 9 and verse 10. I could give a lot of examples. I'm just going to give a few of just the ways that we see uh, many, people, many of the greats in the Old Testament, how they responded to things in their countries. In Ezra 9 10, says, And now, O our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken thy commandments, which thou hast commanded thy servants the prophets, saying, The land under which we go to possess it is an unclean land with the filthiness of the people of the lands, with their abominations which have filled it from one end to another with their uncleanness. Now therefore give not your daughters unto their sons, neither take their daughters unto your sons, nor seek their peace nor, or their wealth forever, that ye may be strong and eat the good of the land and leave it for an inheritance to your children forever. And after all that has come upon us for our evil deeds 
and for our great trespass, seeing that our God has punished us less than our iniquities deserve and has given us such deliverance as this, should we again break thy commandments and join in affinity with the people of these abominations? Wouldst not thou be angry with us till thou hast consumed us, so that there should be no remnant nor escaping? O Lord our God of Israel, thou art righteous, for we remain yet escaped as it is this day. Behold, we are before thee and our trespasses, for we cannot stand before thee because of this. You know what? That's how we ought to be praying for America right now. Say, Lord, hey, we're a mess. We have trespassed greatly. And you know why Ezra prayed this way? Because he wasn't, this wasn't motivated by hate. This wasn't motivated by bitterness for his country. It was motivated by love and concern because they were in sin. And he laid it out and he said, we've got these problems. And let me tell you something. Our country has some problems and we need to be willing to call it out. We need to be willing to call out the fact that our nation is our, our, our political leaders. It's just, it's corrupt from the top to the bottom. The people in this country we are an immoral country. We are, a, we are a godless country. Our priorities are wrong. We, if we worship any god, it's mammon that our country is worshiping. And we need to call these things out. We are tolerant to wickedness. We are tolerant to abominations. We are just accepting, just junk, and, give, and just giving into these things. We don't fight for anything anymore. And you've got people, too. That their attitude, too, because they don't love this country, is just, you know what, it's all going to be Babylon anyway. It's all leading to the tribulation anyway. Let's just let it all go to hell. And let's not even fight against this stuff. Sorry, I love this country. You better believe I'm going to fight against it. You better believe I'm going to stand against the wickedness that is going on. Because I actually love this country, and but I'm not going to be afraid to call it out and try to give some solutions. Daniel chapter 9, turn over to, uh, well, we don't have time to go into that. But in Daniel chapter 9, verses 4 through 19, he's praying to God. And you know what he's doing? He is confessing the sins of his nation. And there is no doubt, reading Dan about Daniel, he loved his country. His country was in captivity. They were under the judgment of God. But what did Daniel do? Three times a day, he went out and he prayed for his country. So, folks, if Daniel can love his country, you better believe I can love my country, too. You better believe I can. But when Daniel prayed for his country, he was confessing their sins. And he didn't, and, and like Ezra, he didn't just say their sins. No, he said our sins. And let me tell you something. When it comes to the United States and the sins that are going on, it is our sins. The abortion, these are our sins. Well, I haven't got, got an abortion. Yes, but we are a part of this country. We are. Hold some of the responsibility, and you think you can just divorce yourself from that. You think you can just while while enjoying the benefits of being in this country. All right, let me just let me just rant for a second about these people that want to just go and just trash our country all the time and act like they're completely innocent. Listen, if you are enjoying the benefits of living in this country, if you are enjoying the benefits of some of the good laws that we have in this country, you better believe you are participating and you are going to partake in the judgment that comes in this country for the wickedness, for the abortion, for all the sodomy and all the filth that is going on in this country. You better believe you are. And you know what? If people would realize that, you know what? Maybe they'd actually take a stand. No, I've just decided I have nothing to do with it. This isn't, isn't going to attach to me at all. I'm going to enjoy all the benefits. I don't get any of the curses. It's not me. I've just decided I'm not going to vote. I'm not going to say anything except just run my mouth about how it's all wicked. You know, I'm not going to have any solutions. I'm not going to have anything. I'm going to contribute nothing to the table except for my loud mouth. And then I'm going to exempt myself from all the bad. Sorry, that's not how it works. Because let me tell you, if our country continues down the path that it is on, we will all suffer too. And I'm trying to think about my kids. I've got seven kids and another one coming. And they've got to live in this country. And, I, and I'm probably going to have grandkids eventually. They're going to have to live in this country. So I care about these things because I love them. See, it's love that motivates me to do what I do to pray for our country and to pray for God's blessing, to pray for God's mercy. We love our country because we want a peaceful place to live. You know, we love our country because we want the best we could possibly have. We want good for the next generation. We don't want to be like Hezekiah. Remember Hezekiah? What he said when the prophet came to him and told him 
that he would that they uh, his sons were going to be taken captive and made eunuchs. And you know what? He's like, hey, you know, blessed is the word of the Lord. It's not going to be in my day. Isn't that a horrible attitude? You know, you realize the reason we're dealing with the mess we have today because that was how the previous generation was. The previous generation just let everything get flushed down the toilet, only thinking about themselves, and we're suffering for it today. And instead of stepping up and saying, no, it's time to start thinking about the next generation like they used to do, we're doing, we have the same attitude, making it even worse for the next generation. I'm sorry, I don't participate in that. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not interested in that attitude. I think that's a wicked attitude. So 1 John 4.20 says, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother... He is a liar, for he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? So you know why we love faith? We love our country and why we favor this country more than others? Because I do. I love America more than I love any other country. I listened to a pastor one day who's Fox News Baptist to the core, and you know, he kept saying, I love God, I love my family, I love Israel, and I love America. Okay, he kept putting Israel before America. Okay, listen, even if I believe that junk, I still wouldn't put Israel before America. And, and you know what? I don't believe him when he says that. I don't, I, I actually do believe him. I think he's that brain, I think he's that brainwashed with Zionism that he probably actually does mean that. But listen, it, it doesn't make sense because, again, if you call out one of these loudmouth bozos that are out there just condemning the country all the time, you know, and then just tell them they're not loving or something, oh, you know, I, I love any country more than this country. No, you don't. Listen, have, have you been to those countries? Okay, if I, if I want to look tough, I love China more than I love this country. This country is so wicked, I love China more than I love this country. Isn't that a great argument? You know, just use the biggest extreme you can think of and then just throw it out out there. He's like, oh, yeah, well, I love, I love Iran more than I love this country. You know, I love it more than you love China. You know, we do these stupid arguments like that. Hey, hey, but listen, remember, look what it said there in 1 John. How can, you, how can you love God whom you've not seen when you don't love your brother who you have seen? And you know, we just naturally love those that we know, those that we have seen. And so you're going to tell me that you love these people in another country you've never been to more than you love the people that you live among. You know what? I don't think you love anybody. I think you're a hate-filled pile of garbage. And I don't believe you. If you don't love this country, you don't love any other country. We can all talk about how we do. You know, how we love all these places. We can all talk about that. And that's fine. You know, go ahead and love all the countries. But, you know, it just makes sense to love yours a little more. You know, I'm so loving. I love, you know, I love the McLaughlin's more than I love my own family. Yeah, that's not impressive. Okay, I don't mean that. And I do love y'all. But, but, you know, it's okay to love your family first. And, 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 and to prioritize them first. Because they are your family. So, obviously, I'm going to put them first. If, you know, my wife needs a new dress, and Brother Matt's wife needs a new dress, I'm getting my wife one before I get her one because she's not my responsibility. That's not right. And you know what? If there's a conflict between our country and another country, okay, I want our country to win. <laughs> this is where I live. This is where my family is. And it's, this, is, this is just a natural, it's a natural thing. But people who want to talk big, they're always acting like they want, you know, they want their country to lose and just want bad for their country. You, you are twisted in the head. I, I just, I don't believe you. I, I hate that attitude. And so, you know, so if we love our children, we want good for them. We're not, we're not going to be like King Hezekiah. I hate that attitude. Yeah, he said, good is the word of the Lord, which I have spoken. And he said, is it not good if peace and truth be in my days? Now, I went and I read that passage through a few times after he did that. Because he in the verse 4, he said, My sons that shall issue from thee, thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace and the king of Babylon. Now, if somebody came to me and told me and did a prophecy, and I believed them, that said, Hey, everything's going to be wonderful you, but your children are going to have a horrible existence. I'd be devastated by that. I'd be like, Hey, what kind of, is there a way I can suffer instead of them? Can we get the suffering over? That's the attitude I would have. I've read this passage 
because I'm blown away by Hezekiah's response. I'm wondering, am I reading this wrong? Is this worded in a strange way where uh, maybe I'm not getting something? But I think he was glad the problems were going to be after he was gone. And if I'm reading something wrong there, somebody let me know the way it's kind of worded. I thought, because that, that attitude blows my mind. But you know what? Maybe it's not that weird because that's kind of the attitude people have today. That's all going to go to the Antichrist eventually. I, I don't know what to do with people like you. And especially post-tribbers that are like that. Okay, pre-tribbers, I get it. You think you're going to you know, get snatched out before it gets bad. So I get it. If you're a pre-tribber, it's like, you know, bring on the temple. You know, bring on the Antichrist. We're going to be out of here, amen. You know, so yeah, I, I get it that when pre-tribbers are ready to just let it all burn. But when a post-tribber is doing that, I'm sorry. And you know what? A lot of these are the single punks. And, you know, maybe they'll start thinking different when they have a wife and kids and people they're responsible for. You know, and that's another reason, too, just never get impressed with the punks that want to run their mouth. Okay? That's why we listen to the older people. Listen to people with some life experience because they, they actually know where it's at a lot more than some of these other people. But he said, I've got seven kids. i got an eighth one coming. I'm probably going to have a bunch of grandkids. And I don't like to think about the world that we're leaving for. I really don't. So I'm not ready to just give up. So turn over to Hebrews 11. Brother Hugo mentioned this passage this morning. See, another thing I can get up and do, I can get up and I can beat my chest about this verse. Talk about how I'm a citizen of the commonwealth of Israel. And, you know, I renounce my American citizenship. I don't, I, you know what? I'm not going to renounce my American citizenship. Because there's a lot of privileges that come with it. And I want to take advantage of those things. You know, as long as I can. But, you know, I can get up and I can do that. But look what it says there in Hebrews 11, 13. It says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims in the earth, on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is an heavenly country. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. And you know what? I thank God that no matter what happens to this country, I've got that heavenly country to look forward to. And let, and let me tell you this. Ultimately, my loyalties are to the heavenly country. Ultimately, my citizenship to the heavenly country comes before my citizenship to this country. Hey, when, if this country tells me to go against the laws of that country, I'm following my heavenly country. I'm following God's laws before these laws. Y'all understand that? I think we all know that that's how it should be. But did you know one of the reasons God has put me on this country as a citizen of this country is because he wants me to reach this country. And one of the ways he wants me to do it is he wants me to love he wants me to love other people. He wants me to love my enemies. He wants me to be willing to even suffer for righteousness sake. And he wants me to be motivated by love. So the thing is, part of my marching orders from my heavenly country is that I make a difference and do good on this country that I'm living in right now and that I love this country. So understand, if I'm if I just, you know, if I'm loving my country, I don't believe I'm being disloyal to my heavenly country. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And you know what? Don't let these loudmouth new eye of beers make you feel bad if you just, you know, you start to feel kind of good when you hear the national anthem, all right? Now, I can explain that. There's a musical reason why, okay? I I'm sorry. When you hear Proud to be an American, when Lee Greenwood starts singing Proud to be an American, we all get a warm, fuzzy feeling, don't we, all right? I, I know you all feel good when you hear that song. I, and I know, you know, pride goes before destruction and the Holy Spirit. There's actually a musical reason that where I could demonstrate that. I'm not going to do it in church. It would be inappropriate. But I, I could prove to you why it does that. But at, at, at the same time, you can take that too far. You can take that too far for sure. But, but at the same time, don't ever feel bad for loving your country. Don't feel bad when you hear John Wayne doing his Why I Love America speech. How many's ever heard that? All right. All right. Yeah. Man, you guys ever heard John Wayne's what? That's why y'all don't love America. All right. <laughs> now, we, you know, some of these things are cultural. We grew up with them. 
it's okay. It's okay for you, you know, and I, I don't want you to ever think, you know, to, to be a hardcore Christian, you just got to be going around just shooting everything down and hating everybody. Actually, to be a hardcore Christian, you're going to be a lot more loving than anything. You're going to be loving a lot of stuff, and you're going to be loving a lot of this country, and you don't need to feel bad about it. I don't feel bad about it. So with that, let's pray. Dear